Welcome to another War Game Review with theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Uh, I'm playing this game. I played it. Uh, this is actually my uh, second full play, and I just lost uh, my third play actually very quickly. Um, I've been playing as the Patriots. I can't bring myself to play as the, as the British. That's what Alexander's for. But this game is called Battle of Brandywine. Designed by Bill Molyneux, and you can see the publisher is Fast Play War Games. This is a, it's a small game. Actually, it's an introductory war game. And Bill would tell you, this is not designed as a deep simulation uh, of any of these battles. This is literally a quick look at... Uh, this situation, the Battle of Brandywine. Um, here you can see Chad's Ford. There's a, a kind of a barricade entrenchment here. But the Battle of Brandywine. Bill will tell you this is made for uh, new war gamers to introduce new people. And it's specifically made for placing these games in um, gift shops at forts and battlefields. Battle of Brandywine uh, can be put there to, to attract new war gamers. Someone that might be interested in history, how the battle unfolded, what happened, uh, etc. So that's what this game is about. So you got to understand that before you go into playing this game, owning this game, uh, or even watching this video review. You can see it's a hex encounter war game. Each side has about... 25 counters, give or take. The British have a, a few more. They have some significant reinforcements during turn two and into turn three, whereas the Continentals don't really have uh, many reinforcements at all. Historically, we know that during this battle, Washington kind of left his right flank, the area up here, really lightly defended and exposed as he was facing... Uh, the British attack here uh, from the Ford. There are Hessian forces, British forces, including heavy guns, light guns, line infantry, and then you have, I think their best units on the field are Highlanders. And you can see here's a look at a Highlander counter. The, the black value in the bottom is their movement. The four, five, and six listed on the left is the numbers that they hit on uh, when attacking an enemy. On the reduced side, and this unit does have uh, two steps, right? It's going to take two hits to eliminate it. So it's a hardier unit. The militia, uh, for example, also take two hits, but you'll notice here, I want to show you the kind of the differences in these. So here's an American militia on the right. It only is going to hit on a six whereas the Highlander hits on a four, five, and a six. On the reduced side, nothing much changes for the Patriot Militia, um, and the Highlander now will only hit on a five or a six. So you can see those are better units. Um, most of the Patriot units are line units, and they hit on, hit on fives and sixes, so the Patriots here are definitely outclassed. Here's a Hessian unit, hits on a five and a six. Uh, and then on the back, it's only going to hit on a, on a six once it's flipped over. Uh, the best unit for the Patriots, and let me pull this up. Um, the Dragoons are cavalry. They can move two spaces, which is important. They're going to act really as a delaying force uh, up here on that right flank. In fact, the game starts with, I believe, three of these Dragoons kind of spaced out with a whole bunch of British infantry up there. So all you're going to try to do is delay. One of the interesting ways of doing that that I thought was very interesting in the design was using the terrain to your advantage. Staying on roads gives one extra movement point. So that's important to kind of get out of a situation. But using these woods um, is extremely key. Because in the woods, and I'll, here, I'm going to go ahead and just show you the play aid because it talks about the, here, the, the terrain. Woods are at the very bottom. Cavalry can only move once in the woods, but that's okay. 
infantry can choose to retreat or take a hit when they are hit. That is only in attacking, not in defensive fire. So cavalry will always retreat instead of taking a hit. And, and those are two very key points of the rules that you need to understand as the Patriots. You've got to really maneuver into the woods. And then there's a swamp area right here in the middle of the map. There's one up here too, but doesn't really play uh, any part in the game. Uh, there's a swamp here, and then there's a line of swamps over here that you've really got to use well to hold the British off. Now, you're not going to win this as the Patriots by lasting through the entire 16-turn uh, uh, game. This game here, I think this is in turn seven, maybe six, and I've already lost the game as the British because I've lost my 10th unit, uh, or I'm sorry, as the Patriots, I've lost the 10th unit. The British only lost five. If you would go up and down the line here, there's a lot of British units that have been flipped over and hit. They then maneuver kind of out of the way so that they aren't put into uh, dangers way. And, and that's something also I tried to do was really use maneuver. These line units, for instance, on their turn, they're probably not going to attack. They're going to move back. They're on roads so they can move a little bit extra, uh, move into there, and then try to fill these gaps with fresh line because you, you don't want to lose your troops. That's how you lose the game. It's interesting here in the rules... Bill does do a good job, I think, of doing some designer notes on the back where he talks about the fact that most American Revolutionary War battles were lost when you lost about 20 to 25 percent of your troops. So when you took casualty, wounded, killed, uh, or captured, typically that would be enough to rout uh, someone off the field of, the field of battle. They would retreat and then uh, you would win the battle. Definitely not a game where you're going to fight each other to the death. And as you can see, I've really tried to pull back. One thing I was a little disappointed in the hills right here. You can see the hills. The only real difference in the hills was is you can't be hit on a six. Um, now, that is typically on these multiple units that roll four, fives, or sixes. Basically, in the end, the only thing that's going to hit you is a six. Um... But on those units that roll four, fives, and sixes, they're not going to be able to hit you on a six when you're in those uh, hills. So using the terrain, very important. Very important for the, uh, for the particularly the Patriots. The British basically have enough units and enough firepower. They also have a lot of these heavy guns. Now, these were brought in way far back on the, on the map, so they're very slow. They only move one. If they're on the roads, they're going to move two. But it's going to take you four or five turns to really get up into the battle. And these guys hit on their non-reduced side. They hit on a four, five, or a six. On the other side, they hit on a, a five or a six. So this, I would classify this as a very introductory skirmish level war game. You're going to learn the basics of battlefield command. Uh, leaders do help. What happens with a leader, for instance, we have Washington here stacked with a reduced line. Now that's that's dangerous. I got to move him out. But they're going to roll their six-sided dice. A reduced line only hits on a six. So I'm going to roll. Oh my gosh, I just rolled a six. Where was that during the game? If I rolled something that was a miss with a leader attached, you get to re-roll immediately. So that's really the, the benefit of leaders. When leaders are with a unit that is eliminated, so if I stay with this line and he gets killed by the next hit from one of these units, these British units. Um, I gotta move these lines around a little bit. What's gonna happen is you're gonna do a casualty check. If they don't roll a four, five, or a six, you roll a D6. If you roll a four, five, or a six, they're a casualty. If you roll a one, two, or three, they simply retreat one space. They have one movement. Um, you can see here's Washington. He only has, well, he actually has three movement, but on that retreat, uh, in battle, you can move one space. You don't get to move three spaces. Um, if you can't retreat, you're captured. So if you, there's only a one unit stacking limit in this game. So you got to have avenues of retreat. 
And that's why you may look at some of these and I'm like, oh, I've left a space here so this guy can retreat because if you can't, man, you're in trouble. But once again, the real benefit of this game is it's just a fun, fast playing, interesting experience uh, taking a look at the Battle of Brandywine. This was done on Kickstarter about uh, nine months ago, 10 months ago. Um, I, I'm going to say my one concern with the game, other than the depth uh, of the game, the game's very basic. Now, I didn't mention this, but you do have an entire page of optional rules. I didn't use those in my first two plays. I did on my third. I've done some free setup, short setups. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can change the game up and kind of uh, learn from it. But one of my criticisms of this game, and I would tell this to Bill uh, straight up, some of the production values here aren't necessarily uh, that great. The counters are rounded, and they're those very thin white core counters. This is something like a tiny, tiny battle publishing uses. You'll notice there's a nub there, and there's no way to get around that. They're not going to come off. Very basic counter, you got a silhouette, the flag, the, the unit name, and their movement and combat values. The reduced side has a white uh, stripe. Pretty standard stuff. Um, but there was a counter missing, and the setup sheet that I had, because I got an early copy, had a couple of errors on it. So they've reissued a copy. Uh, I actually printed that off and set these up based on that new uh, but I, I did get a copy that didn't have uh, all of uh, all of the right components, which was a little bit disappointing. But I would say this is a newer company, and this was, I think, their first Kickstarter, maybe their second. And I know that Bill is getting ready to do another one about the uh, Zulu Wars called Horns of the Buffalo. Player aid's very nice. Show all the different counter uh, types. You can get a look there. The British have Grenadiers, Highlanders, Line, Cavalry. Uh, they're called Dragoons right here. I'll show you. Where are they right here? They look exactly like the American uh, Dragoons. Like the little uh, horse head. Just helps identify those. These units are really used to kind of sweep around flanks um, and, and, and try to cut some units off. But you can see there's a nice selection of units. It's not just all the same guys. The one thing I, I hoped would happen, and the cavalry re really were the only ones that had any special rules. I was hoping maybe some of these other units might have a couple special rules, but they uh, they didn't come uh, straight out of the box. Uh, but I did like the counters. I thought the counters were produced well. Pre-rounded, they're thin. Um, they have that little bit of that waxy feel that you get from some uh, magazine war games. But you know what? It's not that bad after handling them. For two or three games, they're now fine. I thought the map card was really nice. I'm not going to pick it all the way up, but it's it's cardboard, thick card stock, single-sided, uh, really very durable. I think the terrain looks fine. Not amazing. It looks like it's uh, whole clip art that they used and put together, but not not terrible. Um, the box, I wasn't real. It has a sleeve, very thin uh kind of chintzy box. I was hoping to see it come in a bit, you know, a bit more sturdy of a box. There is a setup chart or setup card, which I think is kind of cool. But once again, it was printed wrong. I have to had to print that off. And then the other cool thing that you've got is you've got three smaller scenarios. You have Valley Forge, and this has just this card that you're going to have a couple of units. Gives you uh, the rules, the setups, and you're going to use the set the same units. There are some special rules. I haven't actually played these and I need to. Uh, here you have Germantown. Once again, a separate card and rules, and then you have Paoli. So I thought that was cool that they added in kind of these three separate uh, additional battles just because it gave extra content. And here's kind of a setup easy setup guide that shows you how to set up that Valley Forge. The C is Continental, obviously the uh, uh, the B is British. So that's kind of a look at the contents. Um, then you, they give you two D6s, they're, they're fine. Although one is rounded, I thought this was kind of odd. One is the rounded sixes, the other one is a square. I prefer square dice. Rounded sometimes roll and roll and roll, and you never get a result. 
But once again, I, I think this game, the main focus here is to teach concepts of containing and holding your line. If you remember, I had a nice line trying to keep them. They did punch through in the middle, and I would quickly fill the holes with a couple of units that I had, not necessarily in reserve, but just off the main line. Trying to understand how to use the terrain, the woods to retreat, the swamps to force the British to go around. I've always enjoyed these American Revolutionary War or black powder games. There's a, an advance where, say, the British turn, they advance. The Continentals get defensive fire. And then, if the British units survive that, they get to do their offensive fire after advancing. And, and that's kind of the way... Um, it goes in these games. You kind of marched up and somebody fired and then someone else got to fire. So really enjoy that as well. I liked the function of the leaders. Very nice to re-roll those. I found myself putting them uh, with my better line units because needing a five and a six, if I got to re miss and I got to re-roll, had a better opportunity of hitting. With the British, they typically... I had them on the line as well. I didn't put them with the Highlanders or the Grenadiers because they had such good uh, to hit numbers. But I had a good time with this. It was quick, interesting, a, a good situation. The, the victory condition is very simple. First side that eliminates 10 enemy counters. And it does say, and, and this is something I think I played wrong on my first. And let me show you the rules. The first side to eliminate 10 enemy infantry units, killing other units such as cavalry or artillery or, or militia, I think, does not count towards winning. And there's that note that says during this period of history, most armies would end uh, when they reach 20% casualties. So I, I really like that. Um, I found myself, oh, I'm, I've got seven units lost. I really need to protect my army move some of those guys back. That was kind of an interesting experience. Uh, definitely an interesting exercise that I that I enjoyed. Now, you're not going to go out and play this 500 times. Just going to be honest, guys. You might play this with your children or someone who's not interested in war games a lot. You're going to play this a couple of times with a friend, throw in a couple of the optional rules, play it a couple of times, maybe do a couple of these extra scenarios uh, and, and then you're gonna you're gonna kind of move on, right? But if you don't have many games on the American Revolutionary War, I think this is a good pickup. Um, Fast plays a new company. I think they've done a decent job with their first Kickstarter. I think they got them out generally as quickly as they said they would, and uh, they've really sold well at the different battlefields. I think Bill would tell you his expectations for orders from those forts and battlefields have by far surpassed what he thought. Uh, he would get. And I think that's great. Congratulations. Because I know that's who he really, once again, was marketing to. Those those tourists that come to those battlefields with an interest, buy this game for $40, go home and play it uh, to kind of relive or reenact history. So there you have it. Just a very quick look um, and a review of the Battle of Brandy uh, Brandywine. I played this, like I said, three times. I was taking the role of the Patriots, but I just, there's no bot system. I played both sides the best to, to the best of my ability. I just didn't get the die rolls that I needed as the Patriots. Most of their units uh, need to hit on sixes. Some need to hit on fives and sixes, whereas the British have quite a, more, quite a few more units that hit on fives and sixes or four fives and sixes with those damn Highlanders and Grenadiers. So anyway, interesting game. I love the art. Uh, I don't think this is an original art piece. I think this was borrowed um, from something, but I, I love it. I love the look at, look of that. Anytime I look at something like this, it gives me great pride to understand and know that our ancestors here in America, for those that are Americans, fought hard uh, more often than not without good training, without good weapons. And as you can see, none of them have the same uniforms on. Some have buckskins, some have just shirts, some have blue coats. They might be more regulars. Uh, you can see the cavalry in the background and the leader there. But it, it was a ragtag bunch of uh, citizen soldiers that got together to simply try to defend their way of life and prove a point that they wanted to stand alone and be free 
um, from their overseas, overseas oppressors. So that's a dig there at, at Alexander. In fact, we did so well, I know he wanted to become an American his entire life. Uh, he's now seen that come true. So once again, Battle of Brandywine, designed by Bill Molyneux. Uh, Battles of the American Revolution from Fast Play War Games. You can find this on their website. Uh, you'll get it in, in a couple, four or five days. They ship them fairly quickly. So hope you uh, enjoyed the videos. Let me know what your thoughts are. If anybody played this game, let me know what your thoughts are. But just wanted to share a very quick uh, look inside the box and the mechanics. So thanks for watching. I've been Grant for the Player's Aid.